may not think that rural America has anything to do with you, but let me explain why it does. You see, small towns like this, like Keys, Oklahoma, are all too common now. The agriculture economy has been hit so hard in this country that all the jobs associated with it are gone. The lumber stores are closed, the grocery stores are gone, the gas stations. What does this mean for you? It means that in agriculture in America, it's gotten so hard because of our politicians selling out the American farmer and rancher that people don't want to fight it anymore. They sell their land, they move to the big cities, and they live out the rest of their days as best they can. What does this mean for you? It means that with every producer we lose on the land in this country, it means that a corporation comes in and takes it over. And that if people like Bill Gates control our food supply in America, we lose our freedom. Follow and like and I'll explain more about agriculture in our country. For the last 20 years, we've been attacked by the political classes telling us how to farm in the countryside. Colin Martin Rayner, I'm a farmer, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I've been doing it for nearly 500 years, not me personally, but the family. Wheat, barley, oats, beans, maize, and cattle and sheep. We've had enough. We don't need townies to tell us how to farm. We're now being paid to stop growing food and grow wild flowers. It's insanity. And we're thinking of ceasing our production after 500 years. My view is we've got this political class that's out of touch with us farmers. We work very hard. Debate in the House of Commons last week, there was a handful of MPs in the chamber. They should head, hold their head, heads in shame. At the moment, we are stopping producing wheat, which makes bread, which everybody in this country eats. We've been paid to grow wild flowers. We need to have food produced and made in the UK. We can grow everything. OK, we can't do bananas and grapes and avocados, but we can grow everything else. But people say, well, we can import from abroad. The same madness is happening in Europe. They're asking farmers to plant wild flowers instead of food. OK, we could bring food in from Brazil. Do you know how they do that? Cut down the rainforest. Is that sensible? I don't think it is. What do you think the biggest threat to farming is? What scares you the most when it comes to being in ag? It scares me the most. I'd have to say the people, bigger cities that have never been out here, that think they know the best for what's going on out here, that try to pass rules and regulations on us when they have no clue why we're doing it and we're doing it for a better purpose. You know, we've grown. It used to go be this way 20 years ago and we got to this point today. So it's the people in town that just need to understand. We're doing it with a passion. You know, our families live on these farms. We swim in these creeks and ponds and everything else. So I think biggest threat is misinformation. We're not just winging it. We're, yeah, we're not winging it. And <laughs> we're, we're trying to make every generation and every day we're trying to make stuff better for animals, families, and environment. When a farmer ranch gets auctioned off to pay the creditors, it's always the same. The farmer or rancher puts on a good face. They watch as the tractors their grandfather drove are loaded onto a flatbed and hauled down the road. Animals their father raised are loaded into a trailer. They tap the last one as it goes by down the chute. They're usually the ones to latch the gate and drop the pin in. They shake hands with the buyer and they tell him to drive safe. As they turn away, the tears begin to fall. Their spouse puts an arm around them, a child grabs their leg, and they say goodbye to a place where blood, sweat, and tears watered the ground and grew crops. They watched together as an era and an American dream come to an end. The suicide rate among farmers and ranchers is three and a half times the national average. As of the last agricultural census, the average debt for a large operation is $1.8 million. The United States is losing 4.3 acres of farm ground every minute. In 2023, under the Biden-Harris administration, the U.S. became a net food importer for the first time. We are witnessing the largest hollowing out of rural America and outsourcing of American agriculture in our nation's history. American ag is being strangled with regulation, market concentration, and unfair trade policy, while being made to compete with countries using child and slave labor unhealthy, inhumane, and environmentally damaging practices. Do we think it's a good thing that we become dependent on other countries to feed our children? I spent most of my adult life advocating for agriculture. I became politically active so that agriculture would have a voice. And over the last three years, I've sat through countless ag roundtables, conference calls, 
and more calls with members of Congress and trade representatives than I'll ever want to remember. We've analyzed spreadsheet after spreadsheet and chart after chart of data. And you know what? Through all of this data and in every situation, the problems are different. But the answer is always the same. Nothing changes if nothing changes. And the change we need is President Trump back in the White House. It's time for agriculture to take a seat at the table instead of eating the crumbs off the floor. It's time to roll back regulation, renegotiate trade deals, and stop destroying our own ability to produce food right here in this country. Less than 1% of the population feeds the other 330 million Americans. America needs agriculture, and we need you. We need your voice. We need your help. It's time to make America healthy again. It's time to make America prosperous again. And well, it's time to make American agriculture great again.